This video is sponsored by Core. Core is the new free game creation platform that lets you build, publish, and play games. It's a great way to quickly get started with designing and building, especially if you want to create a 3D multiplayer game. Just pick a framework and start building your own games right away using thousands of free high quality music, sound, and art assets, all with no coding required. But if you really want to dig into it, Core lets you create your own game logic using Lua. You can build games from scratch or remix and reimagine content shared by other creators. And when it's time to publish, your game will go live on the Core platform with the click of a button. Starting August 6th, Core is partnering with Dungeons & Dragons to host the Design a Dungeon Contest. If you've ever had a great dungeon design idea, now's the time to show it off in this fantasy-themed dungeon building contest with over $20,000 in prizes. Core is completely free, so be sure to check it out by clicking on the link in the description. Hey there, how's it going? If you follow my content, you may know that I like making games in short periods of time. Without the timelines, I have a problem of falling naturally into a perfectionist mindset, where I can basically halt all of my progress because I can't get one aspect exactly right. Which leads to the path of, if I can't get this one thing correct, then why bother with the rest of it? So I'll end up stopping working on something and just never being able to finish it. That changed for me when I started making games. I had to let those perfectionist feelings go because I had no previous experience. I was forced to allow myself to make things that weren't perfect because I didn't know how to make them perfect. I barely knew how to make them do what they did. And then I found game jams. The first game jam I ever did was put on by my friends and it actually had a 12 hour time limit. Finishing that game jam was such a rush. I was absolutely exhausted, but I was so excited that I was able to finish it. It really was an awesome feeling and one I kind of got hooked on. Then, on top of game jams, which I do a fair amount of, I started giving myself other small challenges. The goal wasn't really to create a great game, but to push the limits of getting something to an enjoyable state in a small period of time. A while back, I made a couple videos about making games in an hour. I haven't made any other videos about these kinds of challenges, but on my Twitch stream, they were a weekly occurrence for a while. For a little over two months, every Monday, I made a game live in one, two, or three hours. Usually three, because it fit the stream length a little better. And some of the games actually came out pretty interesting. I like to make devlogs about my projects. I do really enjoy the fact that other people seem to really like them, but a big reason for making them is I like to have the memory for myself of a project that I worked on. These challenge games were fun to make, but they all don't deserve their own devlog. So this video is to document what I learned and what I made from pushing myself once a week for a couple months. I did unfortunately forget to download several of the stream VODs, so I don't have all of the making of footage anymore. That's my bad, I was supposed to do it and I forgot. But I still have the games and we can still play them. Like I said a moment ago, I've already made two videos about making a game in an hour. One using an asset pack as the base, and another without. I began streaming right around the time these videos came out, so it seemed like something fun to do live. So I decided to try it out. The first live one hour challenge had no restrictions other than the time and having to talk to chat which actually is a pretty good restriction. It's a mobile style game where the player moves their box between two points. Collect the yellow squares while avoiding the red. It's simple one button controls, press to move from one side to the other. I did enjoy setting up that while the player is moving, they can actually press the button again to immediately go back. This made for some fun pickup possibilities, even with the random spawning of the objects. And one hour is a really short time frame, so that's all I was able to finish with this one. It's not too bad. It's fairly simple, but it does work. My color choices were awful, and the particles are a bit strange, but overall, it's alright. The next week, I upped the time to three hours to better fit the stream length and added a challenge of an art pack. All the art packs I use in these challenges are from creators on itch. Credit will be in the bottom of the screen, and links to the packs will be in the description if you want to try them out. My chat voted on a shoot 'em up game, and I went for a vertical scrolling shooter. Working on this game really hammered home to me just how much time implementing art adds. I was a bit overconfident now that I had two more hours than before, so I added more scope. And you know what happened next, I ran out of time and wasn't even close to what I thought I was going to make. I had planned for at least two enemy types and a boss. What I ended up with was one enemy type and no real AI to speak of. They just kind of fly down and the player can shoot them. There is a score and the player has life, but when I realized I didn't have enough time to make other enemies or a boss, I hastily added a wave system that let's just say has issues. After my first couple of time challenges went so well, this one taught me to be very careful with my overconfidence. Adding a little more time doesn't mean you don't have to worry about going up in scope, even when keeping everything fairly simple. For bonus fun after the time, I made sound effects because sometimes you just need to laugh. <laughs> Alright, I've done one and three hours, why not try two? This time we let the patrons decide the theme, and the winner was Advancing Wall of Doom. 
Two hours was really a strange time frame. I got all the mechanics in fairly quickly and tried to make some art and sound effects. And as you can see, they certainly are there. I made a run the level type game and created this large wall of doom to add time pressure. Dungeon was also a restriction, so the player has to grab a key on their way to the level exit. I actually enjoyed the mechanics of this one. Simple, straightforward, and they work. I made slime that will slow the player down as they walk over it, as well as spikes and arrows that will kill the player if they get hit by them. The only real issue I have with this game, aside from the art, is the level design didn't turn out very great. Like the art in the last game, it really showed me how much time making good levels takes. And this one didn't quite get balanced out enough. The following week, and from here on out, I went back to the 3 hour time limit. And this time, I combined the previous two a little. I chose an art pack to use as my base, which was a top down dungeon crawler. And I kinda liked the idea from last week. But in the last one, I used 8 direction movement for the player. So they were able to move wherever they wanted, which caused a lot of difficulties lining up tight passages. This time, I went with tile based movement so the player is locked into a grid, which I feel worked better. But since this makes avoiding spikes easier, now they appear and disappear, so the player needs to time their movements to get past them. I like them, but I don't think they signal enough to the player when they're about to change state, so it's pretty easy to accidentally take damage when you didn't think you were going to. I added coins for some reason. They really don't serve much purpose other than to make the level harder if you want to collect them all. I also tried to be a little more fancy with the key this time. It works and looks pretty great, except that it always follows two tiles behind the player, so you have to maneuver it just right to unlock the door. I should have made it so that it unlocks the door automatically when the player is right next to it, but unfortunately I just ran out of time and it doesn't quite work exactly the way I want it to. This is visually one of the more polished challenge games, and it's pretty fun. The next week, I tried to make a boss battle. I used another asset pack and chat voted for The Hand to be the boss. If you don't know, The Hand is a really bad placeholder image I made once that my Twitch chat have somehow formed a cult around. Of course, they couldn't have picked something good that I made, but you give them what they want. This whole game went really off the rails because I got focused on making an opening cutscene which has nothing to do with gameplay. So in the end, the hand attack and movement is incredibly basic, and the game pretty much breaks if you win or lose. Definitely not my best outing. So I jumped back in the next week and came up with what I think is the most interesting idea and probably the best execution on all the challenge games that I made. I ran a poll in my chat for the restriction, and they chose Create Your Own Platforms, which is an idea I played with again recently in the Game Maker's Toolkit Game Jam game. For the platforms, I chose to go with Tetrominoes. The player could collect them and then place them in the world. The player also has the ability to right-click to rotate the shapes, as well as a crouch to help from getting stuck. The player must build a path to get to the level exit, and there is a timer to keep track of how long it took. I think there's a lot more potential in this idea, and I'll keep it in mind for the future. With that week being a success, the next one was pretty much a failure in every way. I had just rewatched a couple videos about the royal game of Ur. If you haven't heard of it, at the moment, it's the oldest board game that we know of. I won't be able to do it justice here, but there are links in the descriptions if you want to learn more. I naively thought, a 5,000 year old board game, how hard can that be to make in a computer? And you know what I realized? Making board games in a video game is really hard, and I didn't know how to do it at all. <laughs> After two and a half hours, I realized I wasn't going to have anything working. So I quickly just made a dice roller and gave the players the ability to pick up and move their tokens on their own. I guess it's technically a digital board game, but it's not anywhere near what I had planned. I did play it with my wife and daughter, and we actually had some fun. But I wanted to have it keep track of the turns and tell the player where they can and can't move. This showed me a real blind spot I have for developing and creating anything turn-based. And the final game that I'll talk about in this video is the one I did last before taking a little bit of a break on doing these weekly. This one went a little strange. The initial idea was one I had seen on Jonas Tyroller's channel, to make pushing a button feel good. But after brainstorming and coming up with ideas with my Twitch chat, it eventually evolved into something completely different. Remember the hand? Well, it's back and there's a lot of them. This is what we get when Twitch chat chooses. They spawn at the start of the level and bounce back and forth. Your only way to control them is by pressing the button, which if any of them is overlapping one of the jump areas, they get flung into the air. It's super random and pretty funny, and the difficulty curve is all over the place. But the character that endlessly moves that you have to make jump is an idea that I explored again in the Game Maker's Toolkit Jam game. This one was just a fun and silly thing to make with my Twitch chat, really. And around this time is when I took a break. Doing these challenges weekly for a couple of months was really interesting and pretty enlightening. It really helped build a focus on not overscoping and finding core mechanics in an idea, but also allowing for failure to not be much of a concern. I felt fine to try some weird ideas because at the most, what, I lost a couple hours? But I've gained a bunch of knowledge that I can apply to other projects in the future. The more we see and the more we try, the more we can bring to the things we make. I learned a lot from making all these little quote unquote games. I tried not to take them too seriously, and focused on getting better at doing things quickly. I really enjoyed making these, but I do feel that doing them once a week was a bit overdoing it. 
Like anything, if you do it too often, it started to become stale and the challenge kind of lost interest for me. And I find when that happens, I just have to take a break from a while and do something else. Right now on Mondays, I'm learning different software and that's a total blast. I did do another one hour challenge the other day for the first time in a couple months. And I have to say, it was a good rush again. I'm sure I'm gonna be doing more in the future and maybe I'll make another video like this if people like it. Thank you all very much for watching. I'd like to give an extra special thank you to my patrons, especially Abby Sean, Adam Edwards, David Scott, Nightfall, MLK, Ragnabro, Scott Hansen, and Soapy Gnome. You are all awesome people, and I truly appreciate the support. And one final thank you to the sponsor of this video, Core. Don't forget to check it out. It's completely free. Just click the link in the description. If you'd like to play any of my regular games, you can go to vimlark.itch.io. If you want to try any of these challenge games, they're not all up there, but you can go to vimlarkchallengegames.itch.io. To get in contact with me, you can stop by my Twitch stream, where I'm always doing something related to game dev, pixel art, or game jams. Message me on Twitter, or join the Discord with a lot of other really cool people. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and I will talk to you the next time. Have a good one. Later.